Hello everyone. Right now we're going to discuss for a few minutes the difference between AND gates and OR gates. Now there's there, this is not the only two types of gates that we have. This is just the only two that we're going to discuss today as applicable to the lesson that we have. So AND gates and OR gates, if you was to look inside of some of your electronics at home, you was to pull some boards out of your computers or out of some of your uh, Xboxes or things like that, uh, you would see some black rectangular pieces, uh, relatively small, and they would have prongs coming off of them. And this is the type of uh, this is the type of component that the gates are physically. We're not going to talk about any of that today. All we're going to talk about is just how they work and how they process logic. So we're going to start with an AND gate. An AND gate to the left has a series of inputs, and then to the right it has an output. And what it does, what what they do is they process a series of inputs and make a decision based on uh, what type of gate it is if it's going to have an output. Now these are digital devices, meaning that uh, there's either one or zero, it's on or off. Now, an analog device is something such as a pressure gauge or a, um, a, a flow meter or a level meter, but digital devices are zero and one, uh, so it's either on or off. So starting with the AND gate, what an AND gate does is it'll have a series of inputs. And let's say that we have an input that is on one and one. This particular AND gate has two inputs. So if, if we have this input that's high and this input that's high, then we'll, it'll produce an output. So the output will be on. Now, if we had one input that was high, or reading a one, and the other input was a zero, meaning that it was off, then our output would be zero because it takes this input and this input to produce an output, okay? And likewise, if we just reversed it, a zero and a one would still equal a zero. A zero and a zero would equal a zero, okay? So again, to get it for this AND gate to produce an output, we need this input and this output to give us a one here. Okay, so let's look at the OR gate for just a second. It's a little bit different, same principle. It still makes decisions based on logic. But we only have to have one input high to produce an output. Because it says that this input or this input will produce the output. So we have a one here, a zero here, and it gives us an output. It, make, it makes the output on, or one. If we had a one and a one, it would still give us an output because we have this or this. If we had a zero and a zero, that's the only way we would have a zero on the output. Okay, so we've been talking about the start-stop circuit and motor control, so what we're gonna do it just briefly apply this gate logic to our start-stop circuit and see how it works. Okay, so if we look at our start-stop circuit, we have a, a series, like we talked about, it's a series circuit, but we have this parallel loop right here. So we have, we have a fuse and a stop button and a start button or the M coil and the overloads. So let's, let's draw this in a, in a logic diagram and let's see what it looks like. So we're going to start here with the, with the OR gate. Okay, so let's draw it. We have our start button or our M coil seal in, the M contact here. This or this will produce an output on this OR gate. Okay, and then the OR gate is going to go to an AND gate. So we have one, two, three more. So we have a fuse, stop button. And the overloads. Okay. 
Okay, so let's go through this. If the start button or the M coil is made up, it's going to produce an output of one or on for this. The output is going to be an input to this AND gate. So if this, we have an output here, our fuse is not open, our stop button is not open, and our overload contact is not open, then we're going to have an output here of a one, and in this particular case, it means it would energize the control coil, thus making the motor run. So that's how the start-stop circuit that we've been talking about applies to gate logic. And we'll go a little more in depth later in, in some of the diagrams that you're going to look at in some of your coursework throughout the week. Um, we'll elaborate a little bit more on it. But in a nutshell, this is how we went from, uh, this is called like a ladder diagram or ladder logic. This is the exact same logic applied in gate logic. So I hope that clears things up for you. As always, if there's any questions or concerns, uh, if something's not exactly looking right to you, feel free to give me a call, shoot me an email, um, and good luck on the rest of the week.